what's up y'all happy sunday welcome back to the vlog so let's get into the episode there was so much going on let's just get into this recap this is a recap of the shy season three episode nine y'all the next episode is the last episode <laughs> I think I'm more torn about that than Ronnie dying in this episode. Yes, Ronnie is killed in this episode, but we're going to get into that. Uh, let's start in the beginning of this episode, y'all. And in the beginning of this episode, let's just talk about what's going on with Keisha in this episode. We're, Keisha's still going through the motions. Um, she may be pregnant. She's pregnant, basically. That also happens in this episode. So Keisha's character is pregnant by Amari, her abductor, which I kind of feel bad for her because her character, because I'm like, dang, she's been through so much. Her character has been through so much already. And now this, now she's pregnant. And how did she just end up pregnant? Was it too early to tell when they did the rape kit? Because normally they'll check for pregnancy also. Um, when you get a rape kit, you, you also get checked for pregnancy. So I'm like, dang. And then I'm also a little bit confused about why they went ahead and made her character pregnant when Amari was like doing all this talking about how he was going to save her and how the other girl was all ratchet. The other girl he was trying to save before was all ratchet and pregnant and a bum. And then he goes and gets Keisha pregnant. So it's like all a little bit confusing for me. I know it's just a show, but you know, I kind of follow the show. I'm in the show. I'm in my feelings about things. And I kind of um, embody these characters at times throughout the season. And, and I'm following along. So just like everyone else. So when that part you know when they make her character pregnant it just throws me all off i just don't understand but yeah that's going on keisha's pregnant she's looking to get an abortion and i'm that's i'm so happy that she has that option yes i'm pro-choice especially when it comes to situations like this yes get an abortion i am all for her getting an abortion if she need to help getting the funds up i got you boo but um yeah y'all um that's what's going on with her and then she, Keisha's also like, y'all, my, my bobo is just acting up, y'all. I was listening to Summer Walker while I was getting dressed. <laughs> Dre, me and Gucci know all I ever asked was you to pick up the phone with you alone. But, um, yeah, I was like thrown about that part. But yeah, Keisha's character, you see that she's also gotten some counseling because she's listening to like these tapes of affirmations. And then her mom, Nina and Dre, also mentioned something about what the um, therapist told them to help them with recovery. And for all of y'all that was saying that Dre and Nina was going to break up, I hope y'all seen in this episode that they aren't going to break up. I didn't feel like they were going to break up. I I knew that they were in a good place, even though it was a bumpy place, you know, they were also, they were still had a strong bond. I knew they were in a good place. And I'm glad to see um, when Dre says that her weakness is um, healing, like she's attracted to broken women. And Nina actually admits that she's a broken woman. So I was like, you know, the first Part of healing is, I guess, acceptance. I, that's what they be saying, right? I be seeing that on TV. I ain't never been to an AA meeting, but I, I hear like that's the first step. Admit it. <laughs> so um, I was like, okay, you know, it's good to see that the family is strong and that they're building. It's good to see that Kevin is still here for his sister. Y'all, I'm trying to get comfortable. I'm really sitting on my foot. Um, let me just... But yeah, it's, it's good to see that... Um, yeah, Kevin is still here and protecting his uh, sister any way that he can. And that Keisha also addressed how she felt about the words that Kevin said. And Kevin, you know, and they hashed it out. It was really cute. I love the relationship. Like I said before, I love the relationship that um, Kev and Keisha have. So... Uh, I also noticed that Keisha is still being secretive because when she went to go buy that pregnancy test, she told Kevin, like, you don't got to follow me in the store. I'm just getting tampons. But really, she bought a pregnancy test. So I was like, here she goes, still being secretive. And I kind of understand why she was being secretive about this part because 
who in the world you know she don't want anybody everybody knowing that her abductor got her pregnant and then y'all know at the end she was kind of looking at um on the internet for like what to expect when you're like one month pregnant and things like that so she may even be considering keeping the baby which i would say do not we do not need that spawn in this world get rid of it <laughs> y'all can hate me if you want to i said what i said so um let's see in the pastor y'all so when the pastor was praising ronnie about um him finding Keisha and that guy was in the audience or a part of the congregation and he was like you don't get no credit because you saved that I was like okay because that's my sentiments exactly like y'all all praising Ronnie like oh you know trying to absolve him of what he did that man took a boy's innocent an innocent young man's life off of some he said she said he didn't even see if that was the truth about what was going on he just took it upon himself the pastor was like oh ronnie was looking for redemption from um people instead of looking for redemption from god and i was like he also was looking for vengeance for um and, you know he took it upon himself to go get vengeance for jason's death and went and killed an innocent little boy so at the end when ronnie gets killed by that dude which i knew something was gonna happen to ronnie i didn't know it was gonna be his last episode but i knew something was gonna happen because of the emphasis that was put on that part when the um boy stood up in the church and was like you don't get no credit because you found that girl i was like ooh, something about to happen to ronnie either this episode or the next one and then it happened this episode but i don't know how to feel about that like how do y'all feel about that you know what i'm saying like i don't know y'all like do i feel i don't know how i feel like i don't want to see ronnie die like i almost shed a tear literally because I don't want to see anybody die, but, like, I don't feel no, really no type of way because you did take an innocent young man's life, like, um, trying to seek vengeance for something that, you know, wasn't your place. Like, vengeance is the Lord's too. If we want to go there with it, if y'all are trying to use the Bible with it, but okay. So, y'all, um, I'm glad that Tracy is in a better place. Did y'all notice that? Like, Tracy's in a much better place. She's going to see her grandchild now. Why was that grandchild's hair all nappy? I was like, uh, why y'all ain't do her hair? Got her looking like this. Uh, and then Ronnie donated. I knew Ronnie was going to end up dead, too, because he he ended up donating a lot of his money that was given to him to um, uh, Jason's daughter, his grandchild. And then he also laid miss ethel to rest basically when he let her ashes go in the lake so i kind of figured his character was getting ready to end but um yeah y'all i just i'm glad tracy's in a better place with you know because she had a bad attitude and she did finally say thank you for all that you did for jason but like you she just as guilty as he is for putting it in his head you know ronnie's character is very vulnerable and she went and basically told him to go kill coogie period that's how i feel so emmett y'all i told y'all emmett belonged to the streets when i said tiff belonged to the streets and i was the verdict was still out on emmett and then somebody in my comments said if tiff belongs to the streets and that's her man then emmett belongs to the streets too and he belongs to the streets okay so Emmett is like mad at Dom because Dom don't feel no type of way about sleeping with Emmett. Emmett is asking Dom like, um, so what we did, it means nothing to you. And Dom is like, Dom is a grown woman. So Dom is like, we did what we did. And that's just it. Like, it's nothing. But Emmett wants it to be more than what it is because he's young. You know, he's still connecting sex to love or something he you know he's make he's connect his sexual experiences he wants that there to be more than what it is to sexual experiences and at a certain age you just realize like what's love got to do with it you know after being through certain situations doing you know being in certain situations and relationships and things like that it's like yeah sex and love um are synonymous at times but y'all were just y'all were just 
messing around and that's dom stands on it but emmett is trying to make it more than what it is like emmett wants her to feel some type of way and he's upset that she basically doesn't feel this type of way and he goes and proposes to tiff and i'm just like why are you proposing to tiff because now tiff is about to hate this restaurant she's about to hate you and she's about to hate dom and dom is calling tiff sis and all this other stuff i was like dom ain't shit like <laughs> girl why don't you just tell this little girl that you didn't you and uh emmett didn't slept together like get it over with because it's really just bothering me like like girl y'all are all just messy as fuck and emmett had his baby his other baby mamas there and just going to propose to tip in front of his other baby mamas i was like did y'all see his other baby mamas roll their eyes i was like girl i hope y'all ain't jealous because y'all just missed the bullet because he ain't he ain't no good he just proposing to put on the show in the, in the next episode. Do y'all think in this episode, the next episode, we're going to see him tell um, Tiff the truth? Or y'all think that um, the truth is going to, is it going to be the next season? Is there even going to be a next season? Like, all the characters are dead. Like, I, they should have just had me pop up and just air the place out. And then that could have been it. That's what, that's what. <laughs> should happen on episode 10 just let me pop up and just air everybody out and we can just say thanks for watching season one through three we enjoyed it <laughs> but yeah y'all um did y'all think dude i really planted that coke on trick because i guess nobody moves on the 63rd street mafia unless dude i said so but i don't know what are y'all thoughts on that i what would be his angle to plant that on Trig? Trig already has a history on him. So, you know, like, I guess that's just to make it worse or something. I, I'm not sure, y'all. But y'all let me know. And then I really do not like the way that dude I was um, talking to Camille. But how do y'all feel about Camille? I was like, see, this is why, dude, I can't trust you. So Camille goes ahead and gives um, the passcode to... Uh, to the safe to jake and jake gives some incriminating information is what i'm assuming to uh camille's campaign manager so i'm excited to see the next episode to see what that information was y'all what do y'all think it is like what what could he have really had it's probably some business moves he made i don't know money laundering you know how those business people be doing all them little schemes or whatever so i'm ex i want to know i want to know 11 27 46 i want to know it all i hope we get into that on the next episode y'all I, I mean the next episode can't be that long like how much how much can we get into like are we about to see keisha get an abortion or what all are we gonna see on the next episode and then this is the last episode like ah, don't leave us hanging like this don't do it lena but yeah y'all um i think that's all i had to say about this episode and then jake my last thing is jake and um i can't believe that jake has chosen trick i really i really don't understand jake's logic for that but it is what it is and then Gemma and kev kev is kind of in the doghouse with Gemma's father even though that Gemma was trying to smash him he like Gemma was trying to have sex with me and, his, and her dad is mad at me. I'm like, yeah, Kev. So Kev is trying to figure out how he can get back in Gemma's father's good graces. And y'all, I just don't know. I don't know how all this, even with the campaign, I don't know how, you know, Gemma's dad is back and do that in the campaign. And Kevin's, uh, even Papa's father is now um supporting Duda's campaign so i don't know how all this information that kev that um jake just gave over to camille's uh campaign manager is going to sway the vote but y'all speaking of swaying the vote did y'all see kamala harris is now joe biden's vice president they want that black vote so bad y'all there is still power in the black vote y'all y'all better wake up Anyways, y'all, it's been real. I got somewhere to go. Like, I really just got up and got dressed. Hopefully, I can go do what I need to do because this has started raining. But, y'all, yeah, it's been real. Thanks for watching. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm going to see y'all next Sunday for the last recap. The last recap.
Bye, y'all. <laughs>